today I'm going to show you how Informatica Cloud's real-time features can let you build a workflow process application that interacts with data um, from other sources, uh, and it can all be run from right within the Salesforce UI. So um, in this scenario, I am going to uh, pretend that I am a wholesale food distributor, and I've got a bunch of seafood I want to sell, so I know a Honan Catering Group has been a good account. I want to go off and sell to them. So I'm going to come down and look at contacts, and maybe this guy, Sean Forbes, would be a good person to uh, sell to. He's the CFO. So I go over to the contact, and then I'm going to um, click this button that lets me create a new opportunity, but it's going to take me through several other steps as well as part of a process application. So the first thing it does is give me a little screen, and it has a little script if I didn't know what to say. I could say, hey, this is Eric from Wholesale Foods. We're having a seafood special. So let's say Sean Forbes does want to buy. So I click continue, and now I have a little screen. And again, this is created with our workflow guide designer. I'll show it to you in a bit. Uh, and I can put in the name of an opportunity. It's just showing me some of the um, uh, fields that I should fill out. And let's say uh, Sean's got an event on Christmas, so we're going to say this closes uh, the day before Christmas. That's going to actually go off and create the opportunity in Salesforce. So there's an example of doing some real-time data integration. And now we're actually, um, we've done a query and we've gone off and looked at a different Salesforce org. If I show you the account in this Salesforce org, you'll see that there are no cases on this account. Uh, it turns out in this particular scenario, uh, for some reason, a company has a separate Salesforce org, and this often happens in big companies. They have multiple Salesforce orgs. Uh, it's really hard to keep the data synced, so they just want to be able to, on an ad hoc or real-time basis, go look at things. And so, you know, I can actually drill into any one of these or all of them if I wanted to, uh, but I'm going to just drill into uh, this one. And I can actually go in and I change data in that other Salesforce org. I could update things uh, if I wanted to. Uh, and I could escalate this case if I wanted to and say, you know, help, uh, I have a big deal on the go here. Uh, and those notes would go to the support manager or whoever was the owner of the case in that other org. We could create chatter or create a task for them. Uh, and now I'm going to do another thing. You know, when I create a new opportunity on an account, I should check to make sure they don't owe us money. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and do a real-time uh, query out to NetSuite, which is a cloud-based ERP or cloud-based financial system. And it turns out it's brought back information. They do owe us uh, money. They owe us more than $1,000, and it's, it's quite overdue. So um, I'm going to click Continue, and we're going to say to the user, hey, you know what? This is bad. These guys owe us. Let's take some action to get paid. Do we have a good finance contact in here? And so I could even search on this list, and it looks like Tim Barr is a pretty good contact. I can say, yeah, we have a good finance contact. And I can say, okay, I called uh, Tim up, and uh, Tim says they will pay. This, of course, now gets logged in Salesforce under the activity history for the account and for the contact. And now I'm doing one more step. Um, because seafood pricing changes on a daily basis, it would be difficult to keep that synced in Salesforce. Um, it's possible, uh, but you'd have to sync up the price book from an Oracle database with the price book in uh, Salesforce. And rather than doing that, we're just going to go off and make a real-time call to an Oracle database, to a table. Uh, this could be Oracle eBusiness Suite, or it could be SAP for that matter. And we've pulled back the current pricing. I know that Sean wants to buy a lot of lobsters. I can go in and filter on that. So we'll say he's going to buy uh, you know, 15 pounds of lobster, and we'll add that to the opportunity. Uh, and then I can keep building up the order. I can add other line items to this if I want to, maybe 12 pounds of trout. Uh, and maybe I'll add one more after this. And you can see it's building the order up here over on the side. And maybe we're getting two pounds of some kind of crab or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, we'll put in 22 pounds of crab. That'll make it a nice big order. And when I click done uh, or end, I get a little summary of what's happened. This is optional. You don't have to have that. And now we're going to go and we'll see the new opportunity has been created. So there it is. It's the uh, seafood order for Sean. Close date of 12:24. We've got the amount totaled up. We have the three seafood items that were created there, uh, and, and then Salesforce automatically totals those up. Now, um, I'm going to come in and edit this, and we're going to pretend that we've actually now closed this deal. Uh, not pretend. We actually did close it. Uh, and now, wouldn't it be great uh, if we took the information from this opportunity? wrote that information over into SAP and created an order in SAP and then got the order number back. 
Uh, and so that's precisely what's going on here. We've set this um, particular Salesforce org so that whenever a deal closes, when the probability reaches 100%, it will trigger off a, a process that takes this information, writes it over to, sales, uh, to SAP, and then gets the SAP order number back. So if I refresh the screen here, uh, there it is. We've got the SAP order number written back into um, uh, Salesforce. So you can see that. Now, the way this is all set up is with our guide designer. Uh, and so uh, here I am. It runs as a tab in Salesforce. The opportunity or the, uh, the workflow app I was running was called Create New Opportunity from Contact. And here's what that looks like. Um, so this is just that process we went through. This was a screen step that we had that initial screen where we said, hey, uh, this is Eric calling. You know, I've got a seafood special going on. Then we created the opportunity in Salesforce. Then we queried and reviewed some cases um, from a different Salesforce org. I can click this plus button, and it shows you that this is a subflow where we went through that escalation procedure. Uh, and then uh, on and on, um, this is where I did the NetSuite query. So to show you how that works, and it would work very similarly with SAP, you just come in, and this is a service call that we've made. So rather than having a screen step, which I showed you earlier, or an embedded guide, this is a service call. Uh, and I can come in and say, let's go to NetSuite and get customer info. When I come over here to this, um, to this information tab, it's telling me I need to pass one input parameter, uh, an internal ID, and I'll get back these output parameters. So if I show you the account again, you'll see that we have the NetSuite account ID right here on our Salesforce org. Uh, that's not the only way you can sync these things up. You can do it by name or other ways, but we just happen to use a number here. So to pass that input field in, I'm going to come in to this input tab. I'm going to say I'm going to get a field from Salesforce. I'm running on a contact, and the contact doesn't have the NetSuite account ID. It's on the account, which is a related list or a related object. And now when I get to the related object, I can get to that NetSuite account ID. Oops, yeah, that's right, NetSuite account ID. And so now I'm done. That will go off and query, uh, and it gets these things back, things like balance, overdue balance. So on the very next screen, this is where we display the NetSuite results. You know, we had the company name, the phone, the days overdue from NetSuite and overdue balance. Uh, we displayed it to the user, and then we made a data decision step uh, so that's another step type up here where we said, hey, if the overdue balance is greater than $9.99, in other words, $1,000 or more, then branch up here and we're going to say, hey, you know, take some action, get paid. So that's what the workflow environment looks like. I um, hope that was useful. Uh, it showed uh, not only creating objects in Salesforce, but querying other systems. And then at the end, um, when the opportunity was closed and we won it, it created an order in SAP and wrote that order information back. Um, into Salesforce. Thanks.